Hello and welcome back or welcome to Sports Talk with Dad. We have a slew of things to talk about, including LeBron James breaking the scoring record, Kyrie Irving to the Mavericks, and we can't forget the Super Bowl's coming up. But before we get into any of that, as always, my name is Kyle, and I cannot call this Sports Talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who was alive to make the first bet in world history, my dad, Tim. Sadly, I made it unable. The man to lose the first bet in sports history. Listen, I saw a statistic that blew my mind because this didn't exist when I was a kid. This didn't exist when you were younger a long, 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 long time ago. But online betting has clearly changed the game. Mm -hmm. 50 million Americans are about to, this Sunday, bet upwards of $7 billion on the Super Bowl. With a B. With a B. B. It's going to be a whole lot of winning going A on. whole lot of winning. And online gambling has really changed that. Before, it was you have to go to Vegas or, or some sort of casino to make bets. Now you can make it anywhere. And you and I were talking, and we decided for our viewers, for you guys out there, we needed to add a member to the Sports Talk with Dad family. And that's exactly what we did with Bet Us. Now, you've heard of Bet Us. It is America's favorite sports book in its 29th year. And when we brought them on, as always, we said, well, you have to do something for our listeners. And they came through. They are doing a sign-up bonus only if you follow the links that you see in the description below and the links that you see here on the screen. You can get 125% of your first deposit given back to you up to $2,500 of money. That is free money directly to you for making a deposit with sports with Bet Us. following the links from Sports Talk with Dad below. Now you can bet on the Super Bowl. You can bet on horse racing. You can play in their casino. You can bet on basketball. You can bet on silly little things like how long the national anthem is going to go. It doesn't matter. Bet Us has you covered. And again, follow the links in, uh, you see on the screen and the links in the description below, and you will get 125% back on your first deposit. Do not miss out on this opportunity. I know I haven't. I know I put a bet in. Well, let's face it. Everybody's going to bet something on the game. You might Always. as you might as well go and get 125 percent of whatever you're going to bet, and bring that much more home every single time. Now, we are not shy when it comes to addiction by any means. We've talked about it on this show. So, if you or a loved one does have a gambling problem, we also put links below to get you or the loved one help that they need. But if you are like us when it comes to gambling, and you just put a couple bucks down here and there, and just like to have fun with it. Follow those links below. You might as well win before you even win by getting 125% of your first deposit back. Again, bet us. Follow the links in the description below. So, betting. You and I both went to bet us and placed a bet. We did. You and I thought very differently <laughs> on who was going to win this Super Bowl. Who you got? So, I think Philadelphia is going to go and get a lead. And I don't think Kansas City, I think Philadelphia's defense is going to force Mahomes to go to the left. And I, that high ankle sprain is going to affect him. It's Their not front seven out. is all first round draft picks. And they're going to force, he had trouble going to his left against Cincinnati. He did. They're going to force him. And they're going to force him to go and make throws off that ankle. And I think Phil, Jalen Hurst has impressed me so much this year. I mean, uh, Lori, the, the owner of the Eagles, they, he, they asked him about an extension, and he said, Hurts is nothing else to prove. No. <laughs> Basically saying, dude's going to get paid. Like, don't worry about it. And yet, for one thing, he's not an Alabama product. He played there. I mean, he is. He played there. He won national championships as a starter there and as the backup. Player. I don't care. He left. Because Alabama said, we're done with you. We're going elsewhere. They went with Tua. Yes, they did. And he sat and then transferred as a graduate. And I am so impressed. He has dug deep. He's on a mission. The two best quarterbacks in the league, bar none, are playing in this game. Yes. First time in history, two black quarterbacks are starting in the Super Bowl. Not that that matters. They are just absolutely the best quarterbacks in oh, the cool league. in history, though. It is. It is. And it is going to... And thank God we're at that point. I mean, just put out the best players. I don't care. Correct. I think Hurts is going to win the game. You? I can't bet against 
Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. I just can't. I mean, these guys have been here, what, two out of the last three years, three out of the last four years? They've been in every AFC championship since Mahomes' second year in the league. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. It's a matter if Reid can, can continue to break that curse. I mean, this is his third Super Bowl being in. He lost 1-1-1. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's his fourth. Fourth. Lost 2-1-1. He's in his fourth now where he can tie that record. I mean, he's been in how many NFC championships now? The guy knows how to win. He's a better coach than Belichick. He has a worse record in championship games than Belichick. He doesn't. Andy Reid doesn't cheat. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm a huge Andy Reid fan considering oh he's a Packer product. You know, he was the quarterback coach back in the 90s for the Green Bay Packers. Offensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers in the 90s and then went on to the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, if you knew you were going to fire Mike Holmgren and let him leave, you should have probably hung on to Andy Reid or John Gruden or Steve Mariucci or at least one of them that became a successful head coach. It would have been nice to have somebody else in the bag rather than have to deal with one year of Ray Rhodes and then a nightmarish situation of what's his name, who was our coach and GM. Mike, Mike Sherman. Mike Sherman. Let, let's not talk about let. Let's get back to the fun game and I talk about the Super Bowl. Rant. I was very angry. I, you were. I still want to see, and I don't think it's going to happen, but there's a petition out there to have Kelsey's mom, because it's so two brothers. You have Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey going against each other, and to have the Kelsey's mom flip the coin. That would be amazing. It would be. It would be. And I know they've got honorary captains, J.J. Watt, as a charity, and the, yeah. they were introduced. But Forget I would, that. I, would, I don't want to see that nonsense. I, this is about entertainment. It's That's good. They're going to be the honorary captains. I didn't say they were going to flip. Kelsey's mom should be flipping that coin. 100%. And both Kelsey brothers should be out there. Oh, for sure. And they will be. They're both captains on their team. So they're both going to be out there for the coin flip. I mean, just... Hearing the Kelsey podcast and how they talk, I would love to hear the interaction they have with their mom flipping the coin. Oh my god! I mean, one hundred percent, one of them is going to go. Now, remember, this decides who your favorite is forever. <laughs> exactly, because that's what I would do. Absolutely, and you don't look at him and go, "Well, obviously, you love him best for right. that." But <laughs> exactly, especially if it goes into overtime and she has to flip again. Oh, oh my god! Well, I think the ref flips in overtime. At least he did in the one. But I uh, bring her back out. Bring her back bring out. Her back I out. mean, this is a, it. Would be amazing. But I I can't bet against Kansas City now. Philadelphia stacked that AJ Brown trade last year turned out to be one of the best trades of all time. They've got to play from the lead though. If they get behind, I'm not sure they're going to be able to make that kind of a comeback. As good as Hurts is, he. He's not as good from behind. Here's the thing. You have somebody who hasn't been there before mm -hmm. versus a quarterback that's been there several times. Now, a lot of people on that team for Philadelphia ha were there for the 2018 Super Bowl. Sure. They still have some people coming back, so they know. But it's a new coach that hasn't been here before. And, and you can't really count the NFC Championship game as, no. as a win. Well, it was. It was, but you, you was played a, against a fourth-string quarterback that clearly didn't want to play in that game. You played against McCaffrey, who's not even a quarterback unless right. it's an emergency. Right. Brock Purdy, whose arm was almost ripped off at the elbow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you didn't play against anybody. I think George Kittle said it best, where it's like, it sucks that we didn't have a quarterback. Yeah. It, it, San Francisco, they've got to address that rule in the offseason, and I think they will. They'll bring back the emergency quarterback. Sure. It's all going to come down, in my mind, it's going to come down to Mahomes' leg, ankle. I agree. I agree. They Two good defenses. What was the biggest weakness for Kansas City last year? Their defensive line. They clearly made a lot of moves to get that mm -hmm. fixed. Uh, the receiver room, they just reloaded in, in that after losing Tyreek Hill, bringing in Juju Smith-Schuster and uh, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Uh, I mean, it took two of them to replace what Tyreek Hill does, sure. but they did replace them. And you got a hell of a coach in and Andy Reid and Eric Henemy who are going to be ready for that game. I just, I don't see how Kansas City is, is going to lose this game. I just think it's going to be a Kansas City win all day long. I think there's going to be a lot more Kansas City fans there, too. Yeah, I mean, they don't have as far to travel, but Philadelphia travels well. They do. It's going to be, it. by all accounts, it should be a great Super Bowl. Yes. I still just think 
Philadelphia is going to win because I'm an NFC guy. That's fair. I go for the best quarterback in the league. Every Jalen single Hurt. Time. He's not there yet. He's close. He's not. He's going to get his running yards. He's, he's going to rush. And j- what makes Jalen Hurts so good is his decision making. Mm-hmm. Like, he decides quick. He does. He, he does his progressions and then makes a decision. And, and he that's turned- what makes him so great and makes him one of the better quarterbacks in the league. And he turned himself into a good pocket passer. He always was a good pocket passer. Uh, he had some work to do at Alabama. Even Nick Saban came out and said, look, it's something you have to improve on. And he did. Yeah. I should say he's always had an arm. Let's put it that way. Yes. He's got- I mean, that's, that's my problem with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson doesn't have the best arm. And he's a run-first quarterback. Jalen Hurts is not a run-first quarterback. No. Jalen Hurts is a get-out, scramble, make the throw, and then run if you need to. Now, when he makes that decision to run, it's a dangerous thing, but he is a pass first quarterback, and I think that's what makes him so great. Well, the over under on the game is 51 points. Ooh. That's a scary bet. I mean, what is that? 20, 30, not even, it's 26, 27, right? That's something like that. I both think... teams have to score 26 points because that's 52. So both teams need to score 26 points. I think both teams are going to score 26 points. I think the win's going to be like 38 to 31, something like along those lines. They may even get in the 40s. It it all depends on Patrick Mahomes, though. He's been getting treatment. It, and as much as I say he's, they're going to force him to the left, he's been getting treatment for two weeks, but a high ankle sprain is just harder to come back from. Depends on the person, though. You and I both have known people that have had high ankle sprains and, and been fine in two weeks, and they're not light ankle sprains they, no, they are they are severe i had a buddy of mine who was a big time skater in his 20s tripped or did a trick wrong whatever it was i was there to watch the injury and it was a high ankle sprain i thought he snapped the thing in half just like you saw with mahomes mm-hmm. and his injury and it happened to be a high ankle sprain two weeks later he's back on the board doing tricks so it really depends on the person here me i got a high ankle sprain i was out for months you didn't get the treatment that mahomes is getting no, I didn't. Really treatment. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it completely depends on the person. It completely depends on the genetics. It completely depends on the pain tolerance of that individual. Mahomes, no doubt, is going to play. Oh, of course. And he, he, but it's a matter of four quarters, too. Look, he, put, he was hurting in the Cincinnati game. Oh. He yeah. just he was limping gut, around. He gutted himself to that win. He I'm, did. Look at his shot before the game, a shot at halftime. I mean, that thing's going to wear off after the first quarter and third quarter, though. And I think he's going to be fine. I just. Let's say Mahomes 100%. Does your bet stay the same? Do you still pick the Eagles? Yeah. Do you? I do. I I just. As good as Kansas City is, and I love Andy Reid, I just believe in Jalen Hurts. He's a man on a mission. I just think that the. The Chiefs have some more weapons. You have Travis Kelsey up the middle, who's the best security blanket in the game. You have Juju Smith-Schuster, who can go down the middle pretty easily. You have Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who's a, the, one of the best deep threats in the league, as long as he catches the damn ball. You took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, leave it to You saw him drop a lot of passes in Green Bay. Uh, but he seems to be doing better with it this year. His nickname in Green Bay was, what's the guy from? Hands of Stone. The replacements. Oh, oh, shoot. Clifford Franklin. Yeah, that was it. It was definitely Clifford Franklin. He was Franklin. He could outrun anybody, but the (laughs) dude had no hands. But he's worked on it, and he seems to be doing better with Kansas City now. A.J. Brown's obviously lights out, and they have another great receiver core. They have Goddard at tight end, who, while not as good as Kelsey, is still a good security blanket. Eagles have a better offensive line. They by far have the best offensive line in the league. It's not even close. And they've got a great defensive line that's going to put... It's all Their front seven is all first-round draft picks. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Mahomes. I think it's going to be a close game. I do. I think that uh, when it comes to the defense... Who's the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs again? I can picture him. He was the Lions head coach. Jim Schwartz. There you go. He's defensive coordinator. He's going to have a scheme ready to go. I mean, that dude can turn water into wine when it comes to defenses. He's going to be prepared. Unlike Drew Barry. I think you're right. If, if we're talking betting, though, I am going to go into bet us, though. One, because I get 125% back in my deposit for mm-hmm. following the sports talk with that code. Two, 
I don't see any way. That seems like such a low. I'm taking over. the over. I'm oh, all day. The over. All day I'm taking the over. Unless both quarterbacks get hurt. I don't see how that's going to be. Bite your tongue. Anywhere close. I mean, if that's the under. So that's nuts. I'm, I'm going to bet us. Who do you think is going to get first? Getting, I think Kelsey you know, scores the first touchdown. Unless they go over the top. I could see Valdez can't leave him scoring the first touchdown. Clifford won't do that. <laughs> he could. I mean, as long as he catches the ball. Put stick him back on. Why not, dude? It's going to be fun. I can't wait for the game. I, this it depends. I think A.J. Brown's going to be the first one to score for the Eagles or or Sanders uh, on a running play. Jalen Hurts could also run it in. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of threats there. That's another thing, too. When it comes to the running game, the Eagles definitely have the better running game. And I think that's going to be how they're going to handle the game. They're going to be trying to run and jam the ball down their throat. Unless the Chiefs make them play catch up. Correct. Yeah, and that's the Eagles have to be in front and play from in ahead to keep Mahomes off the field. I think we agree one thing. It's going to be a hell of a game. This is one I'm looking forward to more than any Super Bowl in the last few years. This, this is going to be a great Super Bowl. This is the two best teams by far as much as i wanted to see purdy in the super bowl just because i wanted to see purdy in the super bowl uh this is the super bowl we were supposed to see. yes these are the two best teams in the league at the beginning of the season middle of the season end of the season philadelphia has been the best team in the nfc from the preseason they have and kansas city survived the gauntlet of that asc they did and they took out the Bengals. i mean that was their one big competition i really wanted to see football jesus in another super bowl but he'll be there again next year as long as they fix that damn offensive line they better or he's gonna be big killed if. that's a big if but i tell you did we did just watch something oh god this past weekend so we're gonna go from a good game to a listen i'm gonna say one thing and i'm gonna say it very very clear because i 100 believe it that was the best pro bowl we have ever seen i'm gonna disagree with you now it was still unwatchable yes but it was the best Pro Bowl okay. they have ever had. Here's my problem with with the Super the Pro Bowl and what Roger Goodell has done with it. Right. He's trying to make this look like prize fighting night, where you build up, you build up, and your Super Bowl is your main event. Right. That's never what the Pro Bowl was. No. The Pro Bowl was always a reward in Hawaii where families would go. Nobody thought of it as a main event. No. It was just one more weekend of football. Listen, I love that they brought back the skills challenge. I really, really do. Because oh. I loved watching the skills challenge as a kid. Okay. They, that was entertaining. It, I mean, it really was. It was. Seeing the wide receivers jump in the pool was kind of cool. Well, and seeing the quarterback comp- skills competition was yes. always fun to watch. Especially listening to the banter because personalities came out. But here's the big thing. You're not going to get the star quarterbacks like Rodgers and Brady and all those guys. Unless you start playing that game back in Hawaii. It's where it belongs. Like, nobody wants to go to Vegas. No. Like, they just don't. The only reason Carr showed up is because he had something to prove. And nobody wants to go to Orlando or wherever else they may play the Pro Bowl. Bring it back to Hawaii. Number one, it's great for the people of Hawaii to follow football. And number two, this is something you earned as a vacation. Correct. They take their families. You go there. Dad's got to play in a game or do whatever. And then the family is there. The NFL can fix up Rainbow Stadium or wherever they played it. Sure. They've got the money. It's not that issue. Sure. Move it back to Hawaii where it belongs. I think you get a lot more of the players people want to see. I mean, you had to deal with uh, Tyler Huntley yeah. in the quarterback skills position. Nothing against Tyler Huntley, but he's not a starting quarterback in this league even. No, so but you, why do I want to watch him in the Pro Bowl? Why do I care? You, you put it in Hawaii. Brady may bring the family. You'll get Rodgers to go. You'll get Burrow to go, who wasn't there. Josh Allen would go. He wasn't there. Put it after the season two. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Like it, this this middle week, we don't need something. Like Put no. it after the, the Super Bowl's over. That way you're getting everybody there. Jalen Hurts will go now. Patrick Mahomes will go now. You'll get all the all-star players, the Pro Bowl players, to actually show up. Correct. And it made it a much... It was much more watchable when it was in Hawaii and all the great players were there. It was still not a lot of defense, which was fine, but it, it was, was a flag game. football game. It was still a game. Right. I mean, I mean, and I love the flag football game. I loved seeing, uh, 
wide receivers as quarterbacks. Like there really wasn't any big quarterback play there. It was but cool. it was a fun game to watch. It was cool to see everybody without their helmets so you could see their personalities. Exactly, especially watching brothers play against yeah. each other. You saw that a couple of times. But put it back to the end of the season. Put the game back in Hawaii. Incentivize these players to go to this thing. Because I'm sorry, if you're if you're walking out Derek Carr and Tyler Huntley, two players, Tyler Huntley threw two touchdowns this year in three games. Mm. And Derek Carr was asked to leave the facility because of how bad he was playing on a terrible team. Those are, I'm not going to watch for that. Like, that's not what I want to see. I want to see Joe Burrow. I want to see Josh Allen. I want to see Patrick Mahomes. I want to see Aaron Rodgers. I want to see Jalen Hurts playing in this skills competition because that's the best versus the best. I think the best quarterback there was Kirk Cousins. Probably. You know, and, it, we, and he had a great year, and he belonged at the... Yeah, he did. He earned the spot. He did. But I just... It's not, let that weekend before the Super Bowl, that in between the championship and the Super Bowl, let it be an NBA weekend. Right. Well, and let it be something, let the Pro Bowl be something the players are excited for. There was nothing better than watching Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Brett Favre, um, who else, whoever else was there. Drew Bledsoe was there a couple of years. Yeah. Watching those guys do a skills competition. Those are the best of the best going against each other. Dante they- Culpepper was there a couple of years. Like there are a lot of good quarterbacks. Donovan McNabb went there. Yep. They, all the great ones were there. It was fun to watch the skills challenge, and then the game was just kind of a fun event. And I don't care if you want to get rid of it, but still move it to Hawaii. Have the flag football there. Flag make football it football was fun. It was the most entertaining thing you've ever done. Eli versus Peyton was brilliant. It was awesome. Just put it back in Hawaii. Put it back after the season, so we can see all the players go. Make it a nice vacation that players earn. People are actually excited about being a part of the Pro Bowl again. And then call it a day, because it's still unwatchable. It was I, a long after. I, I was watched watching a lot of other things. I watched golf. I, I watched and and whatever out. else was on. I, I didn't even. I flipped on to see Tyler Huntley throw a couple. I'm like, this is boring as hell, and turned it off. I watched the last part of the flag football game. I watched the the big uglies, as John Madden used to call them, do the weight and the trolley pull or whatever was it was. Cool. I was did cool. watch that. That was awesome. A strength competition. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, and I didn't know this, but I, I got sucked into a wormhole on YouTube, go figure, and it was old strongman competitions. I didn't realize that back in like the 60s and 70s, offensive linemen from the NFL competed in these strongman competitions. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there was one guy from the Steelers that was there. Mike Webster? Uh, I don't know who it was. I don't know. I, I really don't. I don't remember. But there was another guy from the Browns that was there. Um, another year, there was another offensive lineman from another team. It may have been the same guy, just different team now. Well, why wouldn't they? Well, exactly. They're the strongest players on or people on the planet. So the fact that you're bringing in a strength competition into the Pro Bowl for the offensive lineman, that's awesome. It was great to see Wisconsin linemen out there again. Yeah, I mean, you got a few more years before that's even going to be a thing. Well, there was, yeah, there was one there, and, you know, it was nice to see. Yeah, <laughs> It's nice to see Wisconsin be represented in some manner other than terrible football. Look, I mean, it's not going to be the same. We're not going down that road again. That thing has to go. Wisconsin football is back. OH. No. I O. Okay, we're not going down this. So you're just pissed that Fickle's going to come to Ohio State in five. Not happen. He's going to build up the program, fill you with hope, and break your heart like Ohio State always does by leaving to his alma mater, and we welcome him with open arms for more national championships. That's not going to happen. Bite your tongue. I, I, I know where you sleep. I love the fact that you showed me a video all upset because there was a four-star recruit that Wisconsin was in the running for, and he went to Ohio State. And you didn't understand why I wasn't as excited as you were. I'm like, dude, we got a quarterback room filled with five-star recruits. Like, I'm glad you're getting four-star recruits, but, dude, we had Joe Burrow on our team, and he wasn't good enough to start for Ohio State. Like, they made a mistake by going with Dwayne Haskins. Don't get me wrong. It should have been Joe Burrow. Okay, I don't even want to talk about all Like, if Wisconsin had Joe Burrow, he would have been your starter from day one. Wisconsin's got a great... He wasn't good enough to start for us for three years. Wisconsin's getting a great kicker. They did get a good kicker. But that's not that, what we're here to talk that about. That is where Ohio State failed this year. <laughs> we, we did fail at the kicking in the end. Please, Luke. Yes, you did. That, yeah. was, that was, I still feel bad for that kid. 
It was too big of a moment, and Ryan Day let him down by not calling the timeout and calming him down. But another thing that was more entertaining than the Super Bowl or Wisconsin football in general, Sean Payton. Really? Listen, what, how many games did you guys win last year? Four? So, Sean Payton. Sean Payton was announced as the Denver. Broncos head coach. And holy buckets. New sheriff in town. A new sheriff in town. Wow. Russell Wilson has been put on notice. Wow. I was... Talk about a Bill Parcells disciple. Oh, my God. Jesus. That was intense. A couple of quotes on this. Um, one I liked where he did come to Wilson's aid. He was asked on, on an offense that fits to Wilson because Nathaniel Hackett obviously didn't put in a system that was made for Russell Wilson. Uh, and he came out and said, none of us want to want to be at a karaoke bar with a song we don't know the words to. And, and that was a brilliant way of putting it. Exactly what it was, too. Because he, he didn't. Like, that's not the offense that he was used to running. It wasn't an offense designed around him. There was no design rollouts, which was bizarre to me because that's his strength because he's, you know, five foot two and can't see over the offensive line. So he said those nice things about him, he but did. then he also... He that was the nicest thing he said was that we need to fix the offense right. because our quarterback didn't fit to it. I just loved the quote. But then he had another quote, well, especially when asked. He had his personal quarterback's coach, just like Brady in, in, in New England. But uh -huh. he had his personal quarterback's coach in the building in the with building. full access, which Belichick, by the way, put a stop to with Brady Correct. as well. And his quote was, Hold on, I need to find it here because I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, that's foreign to me. That's not going to take place. I'm unfamiliar with that. Our staff will be here. Our players will be here. And that will be it. End of conversation. End of conversation. Didn't comment on Russell Wilson's office. But that's I guarantee gone. that's gone that's, already. That Wilson's office has been cleaned out. He's got a locker again. He's back with the team. The answer to Peyton probably is, is you know what? I love the fact that he's got a, that he's got his own office. I just got a second office. He's going to be back in the locker room. That is me saying that, not Sean Payton, but I guarantee that's the attitude that's going along yeah. with it. You know what? And that's where Wilson should be. Get your ass in the office. Why a quarterback would ever want to have his own office in a building and not be in the locker room is beyond me. If you're going to get that you like late night studying and stuff like that, but go home and study. Stay in the in the team meeting rooms and study if you need to. There's always places you can go. You're you going your offices. You do not need a separate office. This is not business. You're not. You need to be with your team. I've always thought of it like that's like a a retail store, right? Where a general manager has the office. You know, the assistant managers get to use that office. But then it's like telling your best employee that they get their own office. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It. It doesn't exist. That's not something that happens. I, it, it just never made any sense to me, and clearly it doesn't make sense to Sean Payton. But man, if I'm Russell Wilson, I am on notice now. He is either going to get better, or he is going to get gone. Oh, he's going to be either get with the program, buy into what Payton is bringing to him. Right. And I know they've already talked. That's happened. It has. Yeah, it, but Wilson better get his mind right that he's not a star. He's one of 53. Well, he's used to this, right? That's very much how Pete Carroll coached. And so it's just going directly back to that. But he also made, Sean Payton also made a comment about discipline. Uh, I don't have the exact quote here, but it was very much about, we're going to have discipline here. We're going to have accountability here. And you either get with the program or you get out. That's awesome. And I love it. It, it sounded a lot to me like what Deion Sanders said at Colorado. It's yes. great. You're a losing franchise. You had a you terrible have the year. playoff in seven years since your last playoff game was Super Bowl 50. Last year was the most pathetic year any franchise who was predicted to go to the playoffs could ever have. It was bad. It was awful. It was bad. Do I think a lot of it, hearing stories now, was Nathaniel Hackett's fault? I do. It's the same thing with Mike McCarthy in the end of Green Bay or any other coach that fails. If you don't have accountability to your players, then... You're going to lose. You mean like Matt LaFleur? Like Matt LaFleur right now. Hey, look what happened. We lost. Go figure. Speaking of... Back to Sean Payton. He's going to bring accountability to that locker room. And 
Nathaniel Hackett took the fall for the bad Russell Wilson play. He did. Sean Payton is not going to be taking that fall for the bad Russell Wilson play. Everybody, you know, his record is very similar to Mike McCarthy's, but I think the difference is he came into a situation with a losing franchise. And in the course of one year, and when he was with New Orleans, yes, he came into a losing situation. And within the course of one year, he flipped the switch, and that was a winning organization. Within the that. course of one trade. Sure. But he had to well, go. Not even that. a free agent signing because the Dolphins failed him in his physical. That's fine. He still had to work with them and get him to buy in, and he yes. did. And he made he made Drew Brees a Hall of Famer. It was two people with a with a last chance. Let's be honest. Sean Payton wasn't getting another chance if he failed with the Saints. Nobody that goes to the Saints gets a second chance. And it was Drew Brees' last chance to prove himself because he was just shipped out of San Diego. And he was ended up he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, no and, doubt. As he should be. And and hey, as will Philip Rivers. Like, let's be honest here. Philip Rivers is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He'll be a Hall of Famer. He's one of the better quarterbacks of our generation. Listen, and, and Russell Wilson has been set. Philip Rivers is a Hall of Famer. Russell, stop it. Russell Wilson's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, but I think if he buys into what Peyton's bringing to that organization, he's going, to have he, a re- he's going to have a rebirth. If he doesn't win in Denver, I don't know if he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't. I think a lot of people vote him in. He definitely should be in the Hall of Fame, but... Peyton is not going to allow him not to succeed. I don't think it's... I honestly don't even think it's that. I think Peyton's not going to put up with him failing. Okay. Either, either you win... Or you go. And he will respond and he will win. He's, I think so. He's very much back when he went from North Carolina State to Wisconsin. It was his last chance to get to the NFL. Right. And he played out of his mind. Well, listen, he's back to no expectations. And I think that's where he thrives. Let's not kid ourselves. Russell Wilson is very much an introvert when it comes to his personality. And I think a lot of that being on him and a lot of the focus being on him because it was him, not Nathaniel Hackett, right. that the focus was on. Now it's shifted. In Seattle, the focus was on Pete Carroll being a coach. It's back to Sean Payton being the coach. And Russell Wilson just gets to win. Clearly, when Russell Wilson is responsible for the accountability of that team, he can't do that. That's not what he's there for. No. You need the coach to be responsible for that. And Russell Wilson just needs to go out and play football. It's, I agree. It's, it's and where and, it is. I mean, it's 100% where it is. Before we move on to another topic, everybody here should go and like, subscribe, and leave us a comment below. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it. And let us know if you agree with any of the stuff we're saying in the comments below as well. And don't forget to get your 125% of your first deposit with that us also in the description below. Devontae Adams made an interesting comment, and then Russell Wilson, or not Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers made a more interesting comment when asked about the trade to, or asked, Devontae Adams was asked by a reporter, what is Aaron Rodgers' address going to be next year? And Devontae Adams said, next to mine. And and Rodgers said, yeah, go and buy the house. He got paid. Rodgers isn't going anywhere. Rodgers is is under contract in Green Bay. I thought the more interesting Rodgers story this weekend was him being accused of being the biggest sandbagger in the history of golf. Well, he is. He is not. The fact that he said he had a 10 handicap. Okay. When we've we've all seen him play. He plays well, but I'm a 10 handicap. He's, he's a three handicap in Green Bay at the country club. Right. Pebble Beach with 25 mile an hour wins. I think he's closer to that 10. But if you ask Keith Mitchell, professional golfer, he was not having it. He was yeah. not happy about Rodgers. And I think it's funny he's getting upset about a pro-am part of this. But Rodgers the villain. It doesn't matter. Like, he's just a villain to people. That's he's, all he is. Everybody sees him as a villain. And I still don't understand why. I don't either because, they, let's face it, they've had winners at Pebble Beach dating back decades. There's a lot of sandbagging by amateurs playing in that tournament. Oh, for sure. I don't know who picks their... Who picks the handicap he still had to hit the shots and it was a 25 mile an hour wind out there dude i had to report my handicap in a scramble and i reported as 15 when i'm not like i just didn't know how good i would be it's a new course and i don't want to embarrass myself i played a lot better than i thought i would and guess what i got called a sandbagger 
because people take that shit way too seriously. I called myself or, uh, with no purse. Two years in a row at a tournament in Florida, I put my handicap as an 18. Yeah. Because, you know, that's bogey golf, whatever. Right. You weren't at that time happened at to, all. Happened to win both times. Yeah. Uh, and, because you at your best were a six handicap. No, I was probably at my very best in nine. I've seen you play. You were a six handicap. Don't even start with me. I'm mini golf. I'm mini golf. Okay. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Mr. I used to sink 30 foot putts all the time. I did make in a scramble in Florida. I was playing with a former Green Bay Packer uh, defensive back, Troy. Oh, God. I, I'm sorry. I forget his name. 100 foot putt. I was just off the green and I drained that thing. And it was almost a, it was almost a drop the putter, walk off. I'm done. I can't do any better. I've always been able to putt. You know that. I've had the same putter for 25 years because every time I change putters, I feel like I'm cheating on it. Yeah. I'm just but saying you were. I didn't stand back. You, you were a nine handicap probably before the car accident. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, I, now I can't play. So I'm a 38 I mean, handicap. When I was a kid, you were a six handicap. So why are we giving Rogers a hard time? He just played in a freaking amateur <laughs> golf amateur tournament. Program. I mean, nobody cares. People take this way too seriously. They always have. You you know that as much as I do. We've played in softball leagues. Yes. We've played in golfing leagues. <laughs> We've played in tennis leagues. People take this stuff way too seriously. People got mad at me in tennis because I was playing as a 2-5 because I hadn't played in what at that point? Seven years? hadn't stepped on a, on a court since I hurt my knee. I was done with it. I didn't want to play anymore. Hadn't played. My best, I was a 4-0. Maybe a 4-0. And I'm and giving double. myself in credit double. on that. In doubles, I was a 4-0. For those of you that don't know, the highest is what? 5-5? Five, five? No, it's a, you can get up to a 7. Okay, whatever. Professionals what? are 7s. I was very much an amateur. I just thought the funniest part of that and whole People story? are cursing me out. And here's the thing. I had, what, a 30-mile-per-hour serve for a second serve? When the organizer of that that league came over to us and said we don't allow sandbaggers here he hasn't played i haven't played in seven years i didn't that was literally my <laughs> first time on a tennis court we didn't practice before that tournament you said hey i'm in a league playing in a two five i need a partner i said dude i haven't played which in i haven't seven years i haven't played either we went from a two five they put us at a four five we still won but we did well it took a little bit. We didn't win right away. I was like, dude, how was I supposed to know? So, yes, people take this stuff way too seriously. This Keith Mitchell guy is clearly taking this way too way seriously. Way too seriously. Like, and the fact that I didn't know who you were as a professional golfer probably means you should focus more on your game than other people's. Especially in amateurs. Right. You know, <laughs> this, is a, this is a professional quarterback. You're a professional golfer. You really shouldn't be paying attention because he won an amateur tournament. And he hadn't played, so he said, for, since the season ended, which is probably true. Uh, no. No? <laughs> He's played? Are you telling me Aaron Rodgers, who prepares, no matter what people think, this dude prepared, he doesn't want to go out there and be embarrassed. I... You're telling me that before going to a, a pro-am tournament, he didn't play one single round? He said he hadn't sure. played. And I, I, I know how him. to lie, too. <laughs> I'm, sure he was, I'm sure he was hitting ball after ball with a tailor-made truck, but he didn't play. Dude played several rounds, at least on a simulator, before he went out there. And you cannot tell me otherwise. But Keith Mitchell, again, you should focus more on winning tournaments and the people then worry about a quarterback winning a program. And all these people who are worried about where Rodgers is playing next year, he's under contract to Green Bay. He will be in Green I mean, a trade could still happen. The big thing that needs to happen oh. and where he could hold the Packers up is if he doesn't renegotiate that sixty million dollar cap, sure. Then they've got to. Then they've got to trade. And they don't have a choice. Like you got to move on from it. You can't take that sixty million dollars. But he's already said. Yes. He, listen, he's not going anywhere. He's staying in Green Bay. Thank God. Unfortunately, yes. Lafleur is also staying in Green Bay, and Gutekunst is also staying in Green Bay. And but Joe Barry is also another day. Joe Barry is also staying in Green Bay. I don't want to get rid of a of a guy who's just coming off back to back MVPs. I don't either. And blaming him for last year playing with rookie quarterbacks, rookie wide receivers, or, or sorry, wide receivers, is like putting him on a golf course he's never seen before and expecting him to win the tournament. 
Well, listen here, we got some more controversy coming up, but before we get into that, you let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy the show as much as we enjoy making it. I lost my, Rogers my breath for a second there. Wow. All right, take a deep breath. Okay. That cold's still getting to me, I think. But another controversial thing happened. What's that? That I don't know how I feel about it. I really don't. And that is? It could be a good, really good thing. I think it's going to be a good thing for this season. But I don't see how a long-term extension can come from this. Kyrie Irving oh. demanded a trade from the, the, the Brooklyn Nets and got it. Yeah, and he's got in it. Dallas. And he's now a Dallas Maverick. And I tell you what, Dallas Mavericks are all of a sudden, especially in a weak West, are a very, very dangerous team. Reason being, Kyrie Irving has a lot to prove. Because he's looking for an extension at the end of this year. I think the best... I'm not a big Kyrie Irving fan, as you know. I'm not either. I'm a fan of his play. I love what the owner of the Nets did. Because Irving wanted to go to L.A. and that was it. Yes. He tried to demand where he was going. The owner said, yeah, you're going to the middle of the country. Right. And that's where you're going. But listen, Luka Doncic is one of the best players in the game, probably the best European player we've ever seen. Jerk Nabisky might have something to say about that. He might. He might. But Luca is He's great. a different animal. Yeah. Don't forget, Dirk was a different brand. He, he changed the game. He was a seven-footer that hit threes repeatedly. Sure. Luca is, is for sure a guard. By all stretch of the imagination, maybe you could put him in a small forward, but he definitely plays guard, and he's putting up 60 points on a regular basis. And Mark Cuban was the perfect guy to pick up Irving. Here's my question to you. Kyrie Irving's going to come to the Mavericks, right? Where you already have your franchise. Luka Doncic is your franchise, period. End of story. Kyrie's going to come in, and I guarantee he's going to play extremely well. He's going to play nice. He's going to put up a lot of points because this guy's got a lot to prove. Are you sure about that? He is. I, I, I honestly have no doubt about that. He's okay. going to come in and play like the Kyrie we've gotten to know and why he keeps getting these big contracts. Because Kyrie, when he actually wants to play, is one of the best guards in the league, if not the best guard in the league. I mean, okay. this guy this guy's an all-star, and he half-asses it all the time. Okay. He's going to come in look like the all-star that we're used to, MVP form by far. Knowing that you have the star that you have in Luka, and seeing what he did in Boston, seeing what he did in Cleveland, wherever he's been, seeing what he's done in Brooklyn with Kevin Durant, with LeBron, when he had to be the big guy in Boston and didn't like it. Knowing that, do you sign him if he shows MVP, por- MVP form again? Do you sign him to a long term extension? Not a prayer on this earth. I don't need a cancer because the minute you give him the extension, He's back to being... Anytime he's gotten paid, except when LeBron came back to Cleveland, because that was LeBron's it's team LeBron. at that point. Yeah. He has been a cancer. He was a right. cancer in Boston. He was a cancer in Cleveland, which is why they got rid of him. He was a cancer in Brooklyn. He will not be a cancer the second half of this season in Dallas. He will not. He's going to play nice. But he'll be a cancer if they sign him. But whoever signs him, I do believe, to that next extension... He's going to go back to the same old Kyrie we've seen for a while now. Mr. Flat Earth, Mr. Conspiracy Theory. Well, he's in Texas, so he's in a perfect place for that. He doesn't have to get the shot. Well, that's just it, too. Mark Cuban's obviously an extremely intelligent businessman. And the, the name of his team is appropriate. He is a maverick. He is. He is. It, it, it fits everybody there perfectly. It fits Luca. It fits Dirk. It fits Mark Cuban. It does also fit Kyrie. Like, let's be honest. If there's a word to describe him, Maverick fits pretty well. Cuban may be the only, I will say this, Cuban may be the only owner in the league that could work with him and get him to well, play nice. I, he'll cut him. Like, let's be honest. Even if he gives him a long-term extension, he starts being a cancer in his locker room. Yeah, he'll get gone. rid of him. He's got the money. Right. He doesn't care. He'll just pay him out and make him go away. I also think that Mark Cuban thinks the same way I do right now. Where, listen, this guy's got something to prove. The Mavericks have nothing to lose. They haven't been a great team. No, and this is going to help them in the 
playoff run, they're going to be a dangerous team. Let's be honest. You got an MVP player for nothing. Comparatively. I mean, you got him for him and another player for a couple of players. Like, that was nothing. Well, let me ask you this, then. Let's go back to, to Brooklyn for a second. KD is left there. If I'm KD, I'm saying, okay, it's time for me to go. And I'm trying to get back to Golden State. If, if I'm KD, I got two places, three places. And those being? One, Oklahoma City. And my career there where I started, make amends with the team, finish out my career. Because let's be honest, he, he, is, he is a Thunder, and, and he left a bad taste in people's mouth. And I think him going back to the Thunder would, would help everybody. He wants to win a championship. He does. I'm just saying. I said three. Okay. That's one. Maybe four. I added one in my brain just now. I saw that. I'm glad you did. The light bulb went above your head. It did. It did. Two. L.A. No. Go with LeBron. Go with Anthony Davis when he's healthy. And go and win as a late. Okay. Go on. That's two. Three. Boston. Boston is is well built. They have a ton of different coaches that have done well there over the last few years. I would definitely see Boston as a good fit to to go with Tatum, to go with all that roster. I think it would be a really, really good fit. Now, Boston won't be able to trade for him is the problem because they need every piece they have for that to be successful. But Boston would be another really good fit. Number four, and this is where the world could get interesting in a hurry because he'd be a great fit in Milwaukee. He's not coming to Milwaukee. I know he's not coming to Milwaukee. I would love to see I'm him I'm saying Milwaukee. four places he wants to go. I obviously named Milwaukee last. Golden State is where he wants to go. I mean, that's where With he wants. broken Warriors team? Steph I, Curry's broken. You he's put, still great. You put KD on that team, but he's they're, broken. They're winning. Clay Thompson, broken. Draymond Green, broken. I still think they're all the past their prime at this point. Katie's past his prime. He needs to team up with somebody. I think that Milwaukee makes sense as much as any place else. Can you imagine? Ball? Oh, for sure. I, look, I would love to see Giannis and KD on the same team. My God, that would be unbelievable. Nobody would stop them. No. And that's where if you're Kevin Durant and you want to go to a team where you get to win, Milwaukee makes sense. And that's where I think those four make sense. LA, I think he goes there for the clout. Oklahoma City, I think he, that's not, you're not going there to win. You're going there to finish out your career, to make amends with a fan base that loved you for a long time. Boston, he could win with. That makes them a championship team year in and year out. And Milwaukee, you win with. Yeah. You could also would see you, him in Cleveland. Would, you, would he want to live in Milwaukee? And I'm not saying Milwaukee's a great town. We live in the area. Listen, but let's be honest here. Nobody wants to live in Milwaukee. Like, of course he doesn't. But he lived in Oklahoma City for a long time. Milwaukee's better than Oklahoma City. It's like saying nobody wants to live in Green Bay. Nobody does want to live in Green Bay, but they want to play for the Packers. True. Sure. This is about playing with Giannis, right? And Giannis is the greatest player on the planet. I think odds are Kevin Durant stays in Brooklyn. But Boston makes sense to me. L.A. makes sense to me again for the clout. Milwaukee makes sense to me because if he goes to Milwaukee, they win. It's just a matter if Milwaukee has the pieces to give up, and I don't think they do, because it would have to be a trade. And at that point, you're giving up Drew Holiday. You're giving up Chris Middleton. You're giving up a lot of different players to make that work, and I just don't think it's going to happen. Give up Chris Middleton all day long if you could get... I would too, but why would Boston take that, or Brooklyn take that, unless they're going to rebuild? I think Boston is in that same pain as well. They don't have anything to trade. L.A. doesn't have anything to trade. So speaking of L.A., it's going to be a big night in L.A. tonight. It is. Speaking of also the Oklahoma City Thunder, LeBron James is 35 points away from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the all-time scoring. He'll I, get it tonight. I never thought that record could be cut. Kareem was so good, and it, the majority are two-point shots. They are. LeBron's gotten a lot of threes, but Jabbar had the most unstoppable shot in the history of the game. He did. People forget. It, it drives me nuts that he's never in the GOAT conversation. Because he was the single... Because he played with two of the all-time great theaters when it comes to assists of sure. all time. But he played with Oscar Robinson in Milwaukee, and then he 
played with magic. with magic in L.A. Fine, but he still was the most unstoppable force. They changed the rules. Look up Al Cinder rules in college. Yeah, they couldn't dunk because of him. There were a lot of rules you couldn't do. Right. He's the single most dominant force to ever play the game. Wasn't goaltending created because of him? Yes. He could do it all. He And, and he played till he was, I think, 108. Yeah. But, you know. But <laughs> I did see his entire career. But he just never gets mentioned. So I hope... That, but that's not true. When it comes to greatest centers of all time, he's number one always. Always one or, number one. Or one. Two. one or two. Who's number one Wilt. if he's not number one? Wilt. He's listed as number one always. He, he is. You want to talk about somebody that is underrated? Will Chamberlain is a very underrated player. But it's Kareem always is number one. The problem is, is you have guards are, are more exciting to watch. And, and Michael Jordan changed the game forever. And that is why Kareem is never thought of. We don't see centers anymore. The last true center we saw was Shaq. Giannis. But he's not even a true center. He's not. He's, he's what Shaq... And, to my point, when Shaq first came into the league, that's what Shaq was. Shaq was Giannis when he played for Orlando, which is what made him so exciting. We don't have that game anymore. It doesn't exist, and so we forget. I never saw what you saw in basketball, ever. That's true. That's true. It was all post-up players back in the day, and it wasn't just Kareem. It was the Bob Lanier's of the world. It was the Moses Malone's of the world. It was the Hakeem Olajuwon's of the world. Some I saw the-, the very tail end, if I saw it at all. I don't remember a lot of it. I re- I don't remember the first three championships of the Bulls. That was what, four, five, and six at that point, maybe a little yeah. bit younger. The first memory I have of Michael Jordan is him playing baseball. And, and I'm forgetting one, Robert Parrish for the for Boston was another great center. It was just a great time to watch. I love LeBron has earned this this record. It's not like it's being stolen like it happened in baseball. He's earned it. Kareem's going to be there, which I think is cool. You yell at me for making jabs at the Hall of Fame all the time. You always find a way to mention the steroid era in baseball. So don't start with stole the record. But this didn't happen here. LeBron's one of the all-time greats. He's getting a record he, he richly deserves. He's on all the records when it's all said and done. He really will. I still think he's more like Magic Johnson than any other player. Here's my question. I've, I made that comparison a long time ago. He, my- he is. I hate the comparison between Michael Jordan and, and LeBron. They're not the same player. No. The comparison is Steph Curry and Michael Jordan, and it's LeBron and Magic Johnson. Those two are the same player. Very much so. I'll take Magic, but that's just my era. Well, let's be honest, too. LeBron James is the greatest player in two separate generations. Like, he he wasn't just the greatest player in one generation. He transcended into another generation of baseball, or uh, basketball, and was the, now I got baseball in my mind, into another uh, generation of basketball, and was the greatest player then, too. I mean, he, how many times did he reinvent himself? He was Cleveland, where he was the all-time hero, became the villain in Miami, and all he did was win. Went back to Cleveland and won, won the championship in Cleveland, and then went to L.A. and won the bubble. I mean, the dude's won in, with three different teams. His number will be retired with three different teams. Okay, He's transcended basketball. Here's my question, though. You know who, my, who one of my all-time favorite players from back in the day is? Greatest shooter of all time. Pete Maravich. I just want to know, his NBA career wasn't long. He scored in the 15,000-point range. But if there would have been a three-point shot... He would have had an untouchable record. I think so. In college, he would have averaged 57 a game. He still holds the NCAA record. That's, he's going to hold it will never be touched. Never be touched, and there was no three-point line. Correct. I love what Bill Walton said, just that he was Magic before Magic. He was Bird before Bird. He was Michael before Michael. But he played in New Orleans. And in Utah. And in and, Utah. And with no, before the NBA became the ABA. Right. So I just I wanted to get those two mentions in there of two all time greats that kind of get forgotten because they're back in the day. And don't forget, there was also Dr. J in there, another all time great. I will respect Michael Jordan for this. Somebody asked him, you know, how does it feel to be the GOAT? And he's, he said, I can't say that I am because I didn't play against all these other guys. Different, different era. Different era, and there's not the banging around that there was in the Jordan era Mm-mm. when you're playing against Patrick Ewing and the Knicks and the bad boy Pistons. 
there was head hunting going on. Oh, for sure. I'm not sure LeBron scores as much if he's having to play under those rules, and I don't think Steph Curry scores as much back in that day. He could still score as much. It's a question of how, if he's playing 82 games every single year, for sure. But then again, his conditioning was unbelievable. Sure. I think LeBron tran- transcends generations. I think, honestly, if you put LeBron in the 90s or in the 80s, I think he's just as good. He, he will also transcend basketball. you got to remember, this guy is one of the best athletes we've seen. Not just basketball players. One of the best athletes the great- we've ever seen. The greats can play in any generation. I saw something with Trent Dilfer saying that quarterbacks like Rodgers and Brady and blah, blah, blah couldn't play in my era. They would have lit up your era. Well, he forgets. He won in 2000 with whatever they're calling the bad boy Ravens at the time. The greatest defense of all time. Yeah. He won He won then. Brady won the next year. Right. The rules hasn't changed yet. Correct. So to say Brady can't play in that kind of ball, I mean, Brady's been around since the year 2000. He's been around for a long time. Rules were changed because of Brady, for sure. And I think that needs to go back. Another question. Do you have anything more to say on the LeBron thing? Congratulations. Definitely congratulations. We are recording this on Tuesday. They are playing the Thunder tonight. We'll get this posted later in the week. So if he breaks it against the Thunder, congratulations on breaking that record. If he doesn't break it against the Thunder, he will break it in L.A. against the Bucks on Thursday. Break it tonight. Break it tonight. It'll be a huge standing ovation. It'll be quite the ceremony. And as well it should. Kareem's well going to be should. there, and it, and it that's great. It will. It will be amazing. Congratulations, LeBron James. Well earned. Definitely one of my favorite players watching growing up. Him and Kobe and Shaq, Michael. That was that was what I grew up with and, and loved watching him play. Still love watching him play now. I have a question for you because you mentioned ABA, and it got my brain thinking a little bit here. And then you mentioned Trent Dilfer, and it got my brain going even more when it comes to the rules in the NFL. Now, even Rodgers is starting to call out the roughing the passer rules because they're going to be ridiculous. Let me ask you this. You have competing leagues now. Not necessarily competing, but the XFL, make no mistake, is going to try and compete against the NFL for viewership at some point. The Rock isn't there just to say, hey, we have this fall league. He's going to want some of these better players. If these rules, especially if I'm a defensive end, or a corner, they're gonna these pre- rules don't start to change, and all of a sudden the XFL comes and starts offering me massive contracts. They're gonna protect the quarterback in that league as well because the quarterback drives it. I don't agree with it. I the XFL has always been more about the hits, though. That was the big gimmick back in the day that wasn't sure. true. It was the big gimmick when it came back that wasn't true. Long before CTE. But if you can get there's waivers now. And you're not playing with the best quarterbacks. No, you're not. I'm talking about defensive players. If you're a defensive end, then you can go and light up the XFL and get paid just as much, and you don't have to worry about these pity pat rules all the time. If I'm the NFL, I'm starting to get nervous about that. NFL is turning into the no fun league, and I'm dead serious about it. You got to let the quarterbacks get hit, let the defense do their job. You've got to start letting them chuck across the middle. The pendulum's got to start swinging back. I mean, I love seeing the ball thrown to the wide receivers, but I also like seeing the defense playing as well. Listen, at this point, you know what you're getting into. Everything's out there. You know you're losing 10, 10 years of your life for a lot of money up front. Sure. It's just, unless you're a quarterback. Unless you're, and then you can't be touched. Right. And you'll live Even for quarterbacks, you know that. And that's where I think we've... we've and a big part of it has been scoring where they want to see more scoring because people find scoring exciting. True, but we also want to see big defensive hits and big defensive stands. If, if they outlaw, because they're talking about outlawing the tackle where they grab them and they're pulling them down from behind because of the couple leg injuries that happen. Good Lord, it's football. At some point, you have to be allowed to be hit. You, you got to, you, they were tackled. Because when do you get hurt the most? Not going full speed. When you half speed, right. quarter speed, and you're starting to ask these defensive players to go at slower speeds and start to think too much when they're making hits, and your defensive injuries are going to start to go on the rise if they're not already. I don't have those statistics in front of me. Well, you already. But I got to assume that a lot of these defenders are starting to get hit. You already have taken away, as they should, the head shots. So you got to hit them between the upper knees, the thighs, and the shoulders. If you're going to take the waist away now. Nobody's ever going to be able to make a tackle. Just put flags on them and call it a day. You might as well. 
And, and we're getting to that point, and I think that's where you're going to start to see a fight back on this stuff. Because as of now, they just say yes and make the changes in the name of player safety. But it's the same thing with anything else in this world. If you say this is for the betterment of somebody, there's something else behind that that you're not seeing. It's for the that's children. going to make this a bad decision. Right. The, the more you take away from people, the more dangerous things actually get. And it's a, the NFL is no different than that. You're starting to take more and more hits away, and guess what's going to happen? These guys are going to start half-assing it on the field, and that's when people really get hurt. There was nothing wrong when, when Mahomes got hit. There was, it was not a bad tackle. Clean hit. Clean hit. And it was a clean hit when the uh, Cowboy got tackled. Can't think of who it was again. But he went down, and he, yeah, he got a knee injury, but it's Check still, thank you. It was a clean hit. I didn't know which cowboy you're talking about for a second there. Sorry. I didn't know if you're talking Pollard this year or Dak Prescott a few years ago. I've got a bet for you, by the way. Okay. For Bet USA. How much do you want to bet? It's not going to be the Kelsey mom, as it should be. Mar Hamlin will be tossing out, will be flipped in the coin. I mean, we really haven't seen DeMar Hamlin yet. Haven't? Well, I mean, you've seen him we really, If box. we really want to talk conspiracy theories here. We have yet to see his face. I've seen it in the box. No, you didn't. That wasn't him. You saw him with a mask and a hood on. Okay. You have not seen DeMar okay. Hamlin's face yet. I should be calling Boomer on you right now. I'm just saying, like, if you're the NFL, and I'm not saying I believe this. I just think conspiracy theories are fun. But if, if you are the NFL, what's the first thing you want people to see? You wanted the people to see his face to let him know he's okay. He wore a mask and a hood out of the car. He had a mask and a hood on out in the concourse. He had a mask and a hood on the entire time he was in the booth and was at that game. He never took it off. What better in time, a suite? What better time to take it off and come out and flip the coin? Yeah, I just think it's really interesting. It's gonna be a good bet. Do I think that was him? Probably. I I don't because the NFL has nothing. There's well, no they do have stuff to gain by not showing him if he's, you know, dead. They're being very careful with him. They want him to heal. Well, why wouldn't you show his face? I... Why was he wearing a hood and a mask the whole time he was out? There Maybe has the to be doctors, a reason. The doctors told him to wear a mask. Because sure, but it doesn't mean he has up. to wear a hood. I... Like, dude, you couldn't even see his okay. eyes. I'm sorry I brought it when up. When he was I'm... walking around the concourse, his head was down. I thought this was a good bet, and you've just ruined it for me. End of discussion. Probably should be the end of the show. It probably should. We wow. have had a heck of a show. Again, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying I believe the conspiracy. I just find it compelling. <laughs> Guys, you don't know how many conspiracy theories I have to hear from him because he loves every one of them. They're all fun. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't necessarily believe all of them. I don't believe most of them. There's only two. JFK was not shot with by one guy. And sure. the aliens did land in Roswell. That's it. I mean, that's yours? <laughs> well, yeah, you've got a thousand other ones. I just find them. I love the, the creativity. I respect creativity from people. There are some mental gymnastics that go on. There are some mental gymnastics that people show, and I love it. I love reading them. I love picking them apart, and then people going back and picking them re-apart. It's... I love all of them, so keep them coming. If you have conspiracy theories, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy the show as much as we enjoy making it. It is the most terrifying time of my week. Time for the Old Man Minute. Your last word. Actually, it's not the Old Man Minute. You scared the crap out of me last week. All of a sudden, I get a call. Hey. We don't need to talk about this. On we're that. talking about it. Come over. Kyle's short of breath, and he's having chest pains. Can mm -hmm. you come and take him to the doctor? I was fine. We don't need to talk about this on air. Then we can move on. You're a workoutaholic. You're in the best shape of your life. You took too much creatine. That's not what it was at all. That's what the doctor no, said. The doctor said creatine gives off a, okay. a it's called creatine. Creatine, I think, is what he said. It, it has to do with the kidneys. They were making sure my kidneys didn't fail okay. down, so they asked Whatever. me to take creatine. Bottom line of the story, they said it was something in a pre-workout I was taking that I had a bad situation with, and it caused my heart to go nuts. Yes, it did. So don't ignore the signs. 
Plus, I had a cold. You Plus did an exorcist sign. I was proud of you. But if you die, I'm going to kill you. Listen, I have so, two kids and an amazing wife. I'm not going anywhere. Well, and only to die chance. young. So you've got that. The only part right. that I was pissed about with the whole thing is I kept expecting people to send me home, and people refused to send me home. No, they sent you to a, from the urgent care. We had to go to the ER at a hospital to get you checked. And then thought you were going to be in overnight. Thankfully, you weren't. You're fine. You're back to being completely abnormal fine. again. Make sure you check your pre-workouts that there's nothing in them that uh, raises the stimulant level. Because I think that's what it came to more than anything. I had a really bad cold. Mixed that with cold medicine plus pre-workout. You, turned into, a, you turned into a six-year-old boy again because I was panicked. That's why I didn't let you in back with the doctor. I was like, you're not making this more real for me than I already think it is. We're going to pretend that this doesn't exist. But it ended up being nothing. The The creatine had nothing to do with it. It had, they just, that was why I almost got admitted into the hospital. And lucky I had a doctor who under, who right. also works out and understood what was happening because whatever byproduct creatine releases, like I said, it's, it sounds just like creatine, but it's what your kidneys release when they're failing. <laughs> and so luckily the emergency room doctor just asked a question hey do you take creatine every day i said yes he's like oh okay that makes sense and then finally sent me home and you're okay and that's all okay I that's all i care about make sure you go and get checked and don't mix sure. cold medicine with caffeine and more importantly go to bet you us bet us and make bets on the game this week Yes, definitely do follow the link in the description below so you can get your 125% of your first deposit. Again, you only get that by following the links below with Sports Talk with You're going to bet anyways. You're going to bet anyways. 125%. Might as well. Thank you so much for watching. We've had a lot of fun today. I hope you have too. This has been Sports Talk with Dad. Bye, everybody.